Hey guys, today we're going to be finishing off the wireless solar monitoring project. So we're going to go ahead and start this video off by looking at the code since I didn't get that done any of the last two times. But uh, anyway, let's get to it. All right. So to start out this video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the code on this thing. I've got uh, both the codes for the receiver and the codes for the transmitter opened up here. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the transmitter first because it's a little bit simpler compared to the receiver one. Uh, but first off, we're just including the libraries and these two set up the pins on the NRF 2401 board. And then uh, amp val uh, just defines the pin as A0 and volt val just defines the pin as A1. And then this is, has to do with setting up the uh, NRF 2401 board as does this. And this is the two element array for our NRF board to transmit. And radio.begin uh, starts the radio. Uh, radio.set data rate to 250 kbits per second. Uh, that lowers the data rate down from 1 megabit per second. So it's a quarter of the speed, but you do get increased range by lowering that data rate. And then open writing pipe. That just, uh, again, another part of setting up the radio. And then inside of the void loop, pretty simple. We're just setting value 1 in that array. Uh, to the analog read value of the amp val, which is A0, and then value 1 is the analog read of volt val. So anyway, then all that does, radio.write, uh, value, size of value, um, I just transmits the data. So anyway, that's about all that there is on the transmitter unit. Uh, and then over here on the receiver, uh, importing the libraries that we need for the NRF 24L01 as well as the library for the liquid crystal display. And this is the same thing with uh, defining the pins 9 and 10 uh, for the NRF 24L01 board. Um, uh, then we set up the liquid crystal display here. So uh, that just sets up the pins on it. And then again, setting up the radio. Same thing here, and this is the same uh, array essentially as what was over here. And now we get into the uh, sort of things that you can change here. Anything that says constant integer in front of it are the sort of customizable things that I've put in here. But uh, we have uh, constant integer uh, calval equals 509. Now I've done a video on how to find these two. Uh, when I was just messing around with that little ASC712 current sensor board or whatever it is. Uh, but anyway, basically the CalVal is the value when there's zero current flowing through the sensor. That's the value that you get off the ADC. So that's what that is. Um, a good starting point for that would actually be 512, but mine ended up being about 509. Uh, then the constant integer... Uh, MVPA, that is millivolts per amp. Uh, in my case, that's 61. If you have a module that uh, gives you a rating on how many millivolts per amp that's supposed to have, uh, the little current sensor module, because uh, it should technically give you a rating. Mine said 185 millivolts per amp, but that wasn't correct, as I figured out in said previous video. Uh, but mine ends up being about 61 millivolts per amp, so... That's what I've set that to. Um, anyway, um, the next one, averages, I've got that set up as 20. Um, and I'll explain how that works in the code later, but that's just taking the average, that ends up taking 20 averages of the voltage and the current. Um, I just smoothed out the readings a little bit, but uh, talk more about that later. And then this uh, max fail value, if we don't get signal, it gives it 500 tries to try to find a signal, uh, which is about 25 seconds. And if it doesn't find one, then it uh, displays that little signal loss thing that we've seen before. But uh, then we have int fail. That's how that's uh, setting up the integer for how many times it fails. Just gives it something to count on to. Uh, this is for how many times the loop runs. Um, the volt cal uh, value here so that is uh, another one of the things that you can change uh, chances are when you just hook up the two resistors which are 2k and 18k as a voltage divider 
you're going to have a little bit of an offset. In my case, I had a 0.5 volt offset that needed to be added on to the voltage. Uh, if you don't have any offset there, you can set that to zero. Or, well, you could probably, you should probably start with that at zero. And you can also put a negative symbol in front of this if you need to go down with the voltage measurement. So, anyway, uh, volt count, amp count, that's used for averaging. And then these are just all the float values for the average amps, average volts, and the average watts. So coming down here in the void setup, we start the LCD screen, we print out initializing, we set the cursor to that second row, the second row in the first, uh, well, the first character, I suppose. Uh, then we print out version 1.5 on that, and then again with the radio.begin and setting the data rate down, and we're opening the reading pipe so that we can receive stuff here. That's what these two do. And we just put a delay of the second in here, um, which means that this initializing version 1.5 thing is actually going to show up for at least two seconds because it's going to take at least at least one second in order to figure out or in order to get the averages in. And I'll show you that here in a bit. But now we're finding if we have a signal, so if radio dot available, we're going to get the data, uh, which is radio dot reads value size of value, which uh, it's almost the same as the radio dot write thing over here. But anyway, we're going to say int val equals uh, the value of zero, which will be the amperage value that we're getting back off of this, and then we have uh, int uh, value adjusted equals val minus the cal val. Uh, which the cal valve is what we set up here, and that should, if there's no current flowing, that should equal zero. Uh, but anyway, this uh, float millivolts equals the adjusted value times 5 divided by 1040, 24 times 1,000. Since we're dealing with millivolts per amps, per amp, I should say, um, we're going to take this adjusted value and turn it into millivolts which can go in positive and negative in this case. but uh, And also, if you're wondering, the reason why I don't take uh, the adjusted value and just multiply it by a th or 5,000 here is because apparently that number is actually too big for an Arduino to handle. Uh, so you have to take it, uh, do this math to it first, and then multiply it by 1,000 in order to change molts in, volts into millivolts. So anyway, uh, then we're taking the millivolts that we're getting off of this and dividing it by that millivolts per amp number that was set earlier in the code. Uh, then we have float volts. Uh, that's taking that second value, which is the volt reading that we're transmitting over, and we're just turning that uh, value times 50 divided by 1024 since we have a 10 to 1 voltage divider. Uh, theoretical maximum would be 50 volts. Uh, though you wouldn't really want to push it that high because you're there is that fear of damaging uh, components if you do push it too high. But uh, anyway, that figures voltage. And then down here we say volts equals volts plus whatever the volt cal is. So that sets your calibration value basically. Now down on the low end on these current sensors you have a little bit of noise. So basically all I've done here we have set uh, if amps is more than negative 20 but less than uh, 0.20 here. Uh, that basically just says if your current is less than plus or minus 20, or it's in between plus and minus 20, I should say, uh, it will just set this current amps reading down to zero, and that will help with the averaging so you don't have random uh, little bits of current. Because uh, one step on the ADC is actually 0 0.08 amps. 0.08 amps, yeah. So it's almost a tenth of an amp. Uh, so it can get a little bit uh, jittery if you don't have that code in there in order to uh, smooth the amperage out. And that just ensures that when there's no current flowing, it actually does read zero. Uh, but anyway, we have uh, amp count equals amp count plus amps. Now, if you know how to do averages on anything, of course, what you do is you take all of the uh, samples that you have, you add them together, then you divide it by the number of samples that you have. So in my case, I've set it to 20 samples. Um, about that. 
we're just adding the amp count plus the amps, and same thing with the volts. Uh, we set fail equal to zero to make sure that the uh, that fail counter is actually reset, and we're not counting up on that. And count plus plus again, that's used for averaging. And then now what we have is if count, which is basically the amount of times that we've actually gotten the signal successfully, uh, equals averages. What we're going to do is we're going to take that and actually do the math for the averages. So number of averages in this case, we keep in mind is 20. Uh, so we're going to say average amps equals the amp count divided by 20. And same thing as a voltage basically. And then we take average watts as average volts times average amps. And then all we do, we clear the LCD and put uh, all that information onto it. And then down here we reset all the stuff that's used in the averaging, so the volt count, amp count, and the other count, the actual count is all set to zero. We have a delay of 50 milliseconds, and then in this else statement, which is if the signal is not being detected, uh, we have fail plus plus, that just uh, sets that fail value up by one. And we have a delay of 50 milliseconds in that as well. And down here, if fail is more than max fail, which again, that max fail, that was set up in the top of the code there with all the integers, which in my case is 500. Uh, but if we go over that number of fails, we have, uh, it clears the LCD and then it just writes signal loss to it. And then there's a quarter of a second delay every time that happens. So, all right, so one more thing to note here. I'm going to make version 1.1 available in the comments section of this YouTube video, or maybe I'll put a link to it in the description or something. But anyway, uh, the reason why I'm going to make version 1.1 available is you notice that I'm not uh, transmitting serial data out of these things. Uh, and that's just because I was trying to get so much serial data out that it was slowing my program down. So I've gone ahead, uh, this, this is a slightly more sloppy version of the code here, but uh, this will be good for testing because you can get everything on the serial monitor. And you'll see down here, every time this code runs around, uh, we have the raw values and everything printed out, uh, the average amps. I think this one only averages four. No, it averages 22, actually. Uh, but one thing that I will have to do with this, uh, you have to have a higher delay on this than if you were running the normal code. So you have to have like half a second delay or something, which means that it's going to take, what, a good 10 seconds or so to actually get the, uh, it might even be longer than that, but. 10 seconds or so to actually acquire the signal, but uh, anyway, that's just how that is, because you have to run it slower if you want to be able to see what the serial monitor is doing, but uh, anyway, I'll make that part of the code available too. All right, so we're just going to take a little look at the finished product here. I'm going to take you outside and show you the transmitter as well, but uh, anyway, I made this weird little... Uh, label for it just for the fun of it but uh, anyway since there's blank space there I figured I better put something there otherwise it wouldn't look right and really it doesn't look any better because there's glue all around it and it doesn't look good at all but anyway random thing that says solar monitor the sun on a solar panel we've got the 1602 LCD display in there uh, same as it was before power switch on the right hand side hot glue strings all over the bottom and on the other side the charge and programming ports in the warped case. This one didn't turn out too well. I might end up reprinting that. I definitely have to redo the uh, the three D files. But uh, anyway, we'll turn that on. And I figured out, or I think I figured out, that if I don't stand in front of the thing, hopefully it'll actually get a signal here on camera. Because for whatever reason, every time I turn the camera on. The thing will not give me any kind of a signal. There we go. Took it a while to uh, acquire it there, but it did get it. So you see, we're pulling in four watts or so, 13.63 volts and 0 0.3 amps. Um, I'm kind of thinking I might be able to add in another field here for solar panel voltage, but I'm not sure how useful that really is. But uh, 
anyway, this is how it is now. Uh, there's not a whole lot to this thing, just a blank case, a uh, little lithium ion phone battery in there, rechargeable of course. But uh, anyway, that is the solar monitor receiver. I'll go ahead and take you outside and give you a look at the transmitter here. Alright, so back outside uh, at the solar generator itself here. We just got the power coming out of the charge controller going into this big green box and then back down out into the uh, battery bank there and you see we have that one little power LED. This one doesn't have any labels on it, but uh, yeah, just a big green box out here. So uh, that's about it for the transmitter unit. All right, so when it comes down to the final thoughts on the unit, uh, things that I would have done differently, things that I might do in the future still to it. Uh, for one thing, I kind of wish that I would have gotten this port lined up a little bit better in the case, but uh, I'll make a, mod a little bit of a modification to the... Uh, uh, 3d file so that it doesn't do that. I'll make these holes bigger So that if you want to build one of these things and 3d print the case you can do that as well Of course not everyone has 3d printers and if it really wouldn't be too hard to just stick this into a normal case but uh, You just kind of have to modify things to fit your case of course, but uh, Anyway uh, Other than that this thing turned out all right uh, I'm going to continue to update the code as I see fit, but uh, we'll see. Right now we're on version 1.5. Of course, it started on 1.0, and it works. Uh, at the very least, it works. It actually works fairly well, I would say. Now, one thing that I might consider doing would have been to put uh, one of the high-power NRF 24L1 boards on the uh, transmitter side. Uh, that would have increased the range a little bit it probably would have been a little bit less finicky about uh, when it gets the signal but then again just sitting on a desk like this as long as I'm not standing in front of it gets a signal um, just fine here it's not uh, it's maybe not the fastest that it could be at acquiring the signal which means that it's not getting the signal uh, a hundred percent of the time it is dropping some of the packets probably but uh, I mean, just sitting on the desk there, it works, it gets a number. It's about all it really needs to do. And since it's all digital, it doesn't really matter if this isn't getting a very good signal, as long as it's getting some signal, uh, because all the math and stuff's done on the inside of this, and it's just transmitted digitally. So uh, the data itself won't be corrupted by the fact that we're not getting a very good signal. But uh, Anyway, one other thing, I might have considered putting some type of signal strength indicator on it. Um, maybe just like an RGB LED, uh, just to give some idea of how good the signal's doing. How many it drops out of how many that it actually um, gets is usually how I do the signal strength. Uh, one other thing that I could have done is put like a, a red light on here to indicate when this voltage drops down below a certain threshold. Uh, of course, that wouldn't be too hard to add in uh, either, but anyway, other than that, uh, this thing actually works really well, at least in my opinion. Works well enough for my purposes, so uh, I think it actually turned out pretty nice, and you know, as long as it works, and it seems to be, so. Uh, that's about all for this project, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed that, maybe found it useful. Uh, maybe you'll consider building one yourself. Uh, I was kind of thinking about where I should put all the code and stuff like that. And what I'm thinking right now is to go ahead and put everything on Thingiverse, including the uh, the files for the case as well as the, um, the Arduino code files. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's about it for now, guys. Bye.